Hello everyone and welcome back to this nanophotonics and plasmonics course. This video uh, will show a direct coincidence of Lorentz reciprocity theorem, uh, which is uh, the Green's function symmetry. So uh, before we actually go out with the math, uh, let's just remind, uh, re try to, to recall the uh, physical system. So we have a current charge density J1 over certain volume V1. And what we are looking at is how this current density, which is located at a given position R1, will actually induce an electric field at a different location. So here we're gonna evaluate the electric field generated by uh, this current density, so E1, at a position R2. So this is uh, the system we are actually interested in. So now, <clears throat> if you actually uh, look at this particular system, we can actually flip the symmetry of the system, looking at what happens now if uh, a current density J2 of volume V2, which is localized at position R2, how this will actually induce an electric field E2 at position R1. So we are looking at uh, the other way around, so when we actually uh, interchange the source and the detector. So in the first case on the on the diagram on the on the on the right, we're gonna go to A, diagram A, uh, we are looking at a source located at R1 and a detector uh, position at R2. And in the schematic uh, uh, B, we're actually looking at the opposite where the source is located at R2 and the detector is located at R1. So from there, we know that the electric field E1 at position R2, and that's something we've seen uh, in uh, part, uh, part three of chapter two, uh, can be expressed using the Green's function formalism. So here, this electric field E1 at position R2 uh, can be expressed as I omega mu naught mu integral over the volume V1 of the green tensor of R2, function of R2 and R1, times the current density J1, which is located at position R1, and integral over the over this uh, this this volume. So that's the the first one, and then we know that by similar construct. Uh, we can calculate E2 at position R1 from the Green's function formalism because we have a point source and now instead of integrating over uh, vo volume V1, we integrate over volume V2 because we're looking at some electric fields that are generated by the second source distribution. The Green function formalism uh, remains the same except that now we have R1, R2 and we have J2, so we're looking at the electric field E2 generating, generated by the current density J2. So from there, what we're gonna do is basically start uh, using Lorentz theorem, uh, so Lorentz reciprocity theorem what it says, so this is something uh, that we actually derived in a, in, a, in a different video. So I'm not gonna uh, show you where this reciprocity theorem comes from. I encourage you to, to watch the other video for that. Uh, this Lorentz reciprocity theorem states that the integral over volume V1 of J1 E2 is actually equal to the integral over volume V2 of J2 scalar product with E1. So uh, from there, uh, that's pretty obvious uh, what we need to do. 
Uh, so what we're going to be doing here is take the, the expression from E1 using the green function formalism, inject that into the reciprocity theorem on the right-hand side of the equation, and then take the second term, second equation here, the expression of E2, and inject that into the Lorentz reciprocity theorem. So that's fairly straightforward. Uh, that's just uh, a long, a long expression, but that's not something uh, which is uh, which is very uh, very complicated. Uh, so what we need to do here is just take the integral over v1 from the left hand side of the equation, and then if you look at the the blue here, the blue frame, then we have the integral over v2. So I'm gonna just simplify. Uh, it's going to be easy to, to see that, in fact, we're going to simplify all the constants, the uh, i omega uh, mu naught mu that will show up on both sides. So we're not taking this into account in this expression. They're going to be already simplified. And we are just left with the integrals. Uh, then we have J1, which is coming from the reciprocity theorem. J1 at position R1. So I'm going to just use all the, the dependence in positions. Uh, you will see that be, uh, it becomes clearer and actually it's going to be uh, very important. Uh, and then we have J2 coming from the expression of E2 using the green function formalism. And then uh, we have the green tensor, which is here R1, R2. And we have uh, two integrals uh, on over those two uh, different volumes. And the uh, right-hand side of the equation is fairly similar. So we have volume V2, uh, integral over, and volume V1. Then we have the J2 at position R2 coming from the reciprocity theorem. Then we have this uh, J1 position R1 coming from the expression of the electric field E1 as a function of the green functions. And then we have the green tensor, uh, which is function of R2, R1. And we integrate that, over, of course, over the, the two volumes, V1 and V2. So uh, now it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you really see that on both sides, we have uh, integrals over the volume V1 and V2. Uh, we have the current densities J1 position R1 and J2 position R2. So you're going to simplify uh, all of this, and this basically will result, and that should be fairly obvious, that on the left hand side we're left with the green tensor R1, R2. So it's not necessarily a simplification, it's just that. It, uh, those two, because the because of the reciprocity theorem, those two sides of the equation must be equal, and the only uh, so each term should be should be equal, and that results in having the green function uh, elements R1, R2 equal to the green element, a uh, green tensor element R2, R1 to be equal. So this is uh, the symmetry of the green tensor. And basically what this means is that when you have a green tensor, which is uh, expressed simply as, as a matrix with diagonal elements, that the elements ij and the elements ji are actually equal. So that's basically what this means. And that's the symmetry of the green function.